In this segment, we take a look back to 1963, at the Tokyo Yokohama Industrial Complex of Japan. In addition to steel production and other materials, by the 1960s, Japan was becoming a world leader in transistors and electronics production, including radios and televisions, radar, aeronautical equipment, nuclear research equipment for medical applications and power generation, and the production of a wide variety of consumer goods. Historical color footage gives us a glimpse of the intensity and focus of this time period. From these beginnings up to 2023, Japan remains one of the top 10 global producers of electronics and electronic components. This is Tokyo. With a population of over 10 million, this is the world's largest, most densely crowded, most rapidly growing city. It is the capital of Japan. This is perhaps the most extraordinary success story in all recorded economic history. By night and by day, Tokyo is an appalling jam, choked with people and vehicles. The number of cars and trucks increases by thousands each month, and still there are not enough to satisfy the demand. Major traffic jams of two and three hours occur daily. Tokyo is a jumble of signs and shops, inadequate streets with no names. Wooden houses are packed tightly together, and housing of all kinds is in acutely short supply. Department stores, smart shops. Fashions appear on the Ginza in Tokyo the same day as they do in Paris, London or New York. New buildings rise wherever land can be found to build them on. The city pushes upwards and outwards, growing wildly, space becoming more and more precious each day. On trains which carry three times their capacity, commuters travel farther and farther. Many spend five and six hours a day going back and forth to work. The overworked Japanese railways are marvels of efficiency. Super Express trains travel up to 156 miles per hour. The vast Tokyo-Yokohama industrial complex accounts for 30% of the nation's industrial output. The important industrial centers of Japan are all located near the sea for rapid handling of exports and imports. Scarce in natural resources, Japan must import most of the materials needed by industry. The Awata Maru has just dropped anchor in Yokohama Harbor. She has on board a cargo of chemicals from San Francisco in the United States. The scrap from the United States. Coal from Australia. Get the materials quickly from ship to mill. Make steel. Steel. Japan's number one export, replacing cotton textiles. Steel is the backbone of Japanese industry, and the country is now the world's fourth largest steel producer despite the fact that she has practically none of the raw materials from which steel is made. A freighter delivers iron ore. The ore is conveyed directly to the mill. Sheet steel is rolled in one of the world's most completely automated plants and sent next door to the company's shipyard. From iron ore to a steel plate on a ship, only a matter of hours. This is the kind of efficiency which has made Japan the world's number one shipbuilder. Import. Manufacture. Export. 
Export or die, say the Japanese. Without the overseas sale of the products of industry, Japan could not pay for the raw materials she must purchase abroad. And there would be little industry and few jobs for 95 million people who live on a land area which is about one and a half times the size of the United Kingdom. As less developed countries take over their traditional functions and markets. Pre-war Japan depended almost completely on such traditional exports as toys, footwear and textiles to be able to buy abroad the raw materials she needed. Now, other low-wage areas in Asia can outproduce and undersell Japan on world markets in such traditional goods. The textile industry is no longer as important as it once was with the growth of completely new industries. While Japanese manufacturers once followed and copied the products of other nations, they now often lead the way. Japan is the world's largest manufacturer of motorcycles and bicycles, half of them for export. The car industry recorded a 72% increase in production in one year alone. New factories rise as rapidly as land can be created to make room for them. Desperately short of space, Japan literally manufactures acres of new land each year. Fleets of dredgers pump sand from the floor of the ocean and pipe it back to shore to fill in the sea. Year after year, the Japanese have been able to put more than a quarter of their national income into new investment, into new plants, creating new jobs, new products. Not only have the Japanese learned to produce highly advanced type goods, but equally important, they have proved their ability to sell on fiercely competitive world markets, successfully competing with the most highly developed nations. Heavy industry was in ruins at the end of the Second World War. Now, completely rebuilt, new factories, new equipment, new technology have helped Japan undersell and outproduce other countries which often suffer from antiquated plants and methods. Japanese industry is divided into two sorts of companies. One is large and modernized. The productivity of the labor force has been greatly increased by large capital investment in machinery and advanced techniques. The average worker is relatively well paid, receiving twice the wages of the worker in the more traditional type of firm. For example, the Sato bag factory, operated in the Sato home, has little capital investment and relies on cheap wages and long hours to make its product competitive. Great inequality exists in almost half the labor force, as remnants of old ways and an old Japan persist. Yet in spite of low wages, there are luxuries. The Japanese possess more consumer appliances per family than the people of any other country, except the United States. Of tremendous importance in their economic growth, is the fact that the Japanese have created the first genuine mass consumer market outside the Western world. 